You guessed it. It's Charlie McCarthy. And don't forget, Charlie McCarthy spelled backwards is uh, Edgar Bergen. <laughs> Bergen, Charlie McCarthy, and Mortimer Snurd. With Ray Noble in his orchestra, the King Sisters, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and Charlie's special guest, lovely Olivia de Havilland. And here are the King Sisters in a nostalgic bit of gay 90 sentiment, aptly titled, And Her Tears Flowed Like Wine. All the good eat things galore Then she sit right down and eat them Little lady on a stool The life is there, she's always a catch You take her back to school And her tears flow like wine Yes, her tears flow like wine She's the real sad tomato She's a busted valentine Goes her mama and told her She was all of 65 She had never, never married Now the love light came alive She told her faithful brother Asked him if he would mind He said it was grand that would give her a hand But no husband could he find And her tears flowed like wine Yes, her tears flowed like wine She's a real sad tomato Beat up chin A busted valentine Cause her mama done told her Hey, a man's old mind A good man is hard to find You end up getting a bad time Her mama done told her A man is darn unkind Charlie? Well, Bergen? <laughs> well? Well? <laughs> Shall we go around again? <laughs> no, Charlie? What? Your hat. Well, what about my hat? What about it? Uh, it's on your head. No. <laughs> How did I ever come to put it there? Yes, exactly. Surely you know when you should take your hat off. Yes, sir. When? When I take a shower. When you take a shower, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, a gentleman always removes his hat. Yes, I know. Well? Well, today I feel like a cat. Oh, you do? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't believe that that's the reason. Well? Well? Well, if you must know, I want to be ready to leave in a hurry. Oh, so that's it? Yes. And when do you want to leave? Well, when you find out why I'm wearing it. I see. <laughs> Young man, you're hiding something from me. Now, remove your hat at once. No. Remove your hat. Now, hold it. Yeah. Why, Charlie, yeah. what have you done? What's happened to your red hair? Well, it's, uh... Why, it's all black, messy. Yes, sir. Not entirely black. Some sort of greenish purple spot. Yeah. <laughs> but that's an awful color, Charlie. An awful color. At least, Mr. Bergen, it is hair. Yes, I know. <laughs> but what happened? Well, I just decided to dye my hair a different color. I see. What possessed you to do a thing like that? Well, you, you wouldn't understand, Bergen. I see. I did it for the love of a good woman. Oh, I see. Love. Yeah. Love. That's what it is. It's love. L-U-V, love. Yeah, I do. <laughs> now I'm beginning to understand. Yes, sir. I tell you, this time, Bergen, it's the real thing. Uh-huh. I tell you, I'm smit. Yes. Smit like I never was smut before. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a girl. Yeah. Well, not, not a girl. It's the girl. Oh, the girl. She just started at our school. I see. Yes, sir. This is wonderful. Yes. So little Cupid has pierced you with his arrow. Well, 
And I'm a dead duck. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really that bad. Yes. I gave her my pet rat. Yes. And she says every time she looks at it, she thinks of me. Oh. Bless sweet. Yes. Did she ask you to dye your hair, Charlie? No. I did it for her health. Oh, for her health. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, she said redheads made her sick. Oh, I see. <laughs> How so? Oh, she got a silly idea that red hair means temper. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And besides, she said red doesn't go with her new fall outfit. Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> yes. Well, is that all that's wrong with red hair? No, she said she thinks redheads are fickle. Fickle? Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Imagine she said that to me. Yeah, to you. After all the girls I've been true to. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Edgar. Hello, Ch uh, Help. Something's wrong with my eyes. No, what you see, Ray, is true. <laughs> oh, no. <Yeah. laughs> I say, Charles, old boy, why the, uh, the two-tone hair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are those, your school colors? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, I'll ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, really, Charlie, this is killing me. <laughs> yeah. If it only would, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, Ray, when I see a guy like you, yes. I'm almost afraid to grow up. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, really, I can't help it, old boy. I mean, you look just too frightfully frightful, you know. <laughs> Why, you... Uh, I'll clip you... Uh, 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 oh, no, no, no. I forgot. I mustn't lose my temper. That's right. One, two, three, six. Uh, 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 she wouldn't like that. No. The sacrifices I make for love. Yes. Oh, nice, Mr. Noble. Why don't you go out and gently drown yourself, huh? Right, huh? Goodbye, old paint. Yeah. <laughs> Holding my temper is too big a job for me. Yeah. I'm afraid I'll have to put another man on. Yes, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Charlie, I'd like to know more about this girl. Who is she? Well, her name is Nancy Appleby. Oh, Appleby. Boy, she's a pippin. Yeah. Nancy Appleby? Yeah. Why, that's the girl that Skylar Van Snort introduced me to. Yeah. No. Yes. <laughs> My girl out with that Van Snort wart? Yeah. <laughs> yes, and they were holding hands, too. Well, that settles it. From now on, I'm going to have nothing more to do with girls or women. Especially females. Uh, <laughs> I'm so mad I could spit nickels. Oh, now, Charlie. Uh, Charlie, temper, temper, temper. Oh, temper nuts. All right. Uh, Next time that Cupid guy comes around, I'll clip him, so help me, I'll mow him down. <laughs> Mortimer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what brings you here? Well, I, um, uh, let's see, um, uh... well, 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 I got a letter for you. Oh, you have a letter for you? Mm, well, thank you, thank you. Well, wait a minute, why, Mortimer, this letter's for you. Well? Yes. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> uh, for me, huh? Yes, it's from Snurdville. Well, that's funny, so am I. <laughs> yes. Well, here, go ahead, read it. Well, thank you. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, uh, uh, do, uh, oh, ain't that disgusting. Let's put some, put some, uh, put some, oh, ain't that awful? Yes. <laughs> Bad news? No, no. What's the matter? Well, can't read. Oh, you can't read? <laughs> You mean to tell me that you haven't learned to read? Well, I can read reading, but I can't read writing. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Well, that's all right, Marjorie. 
I'll read it for you. Let me see here. What have we got? Oh, well, it's it's just a form for you to fill out. Oh, yes. So you can vote. Hmm? I see it's just a blank. Oh, nothing on it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no wonder I couldn't read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a blank registration form, you see. Are you registered? No, but our prize bull is. Yeah, I imagine so. I'm talking about registering as a voter. Now, in order to vote, you've got to answer the few questions here. Now, let's see. The first question is, uh, uh, what's your name? Hmm? Your name. Well, that's the first question. Your name? It is? Yeah. That's the first question? Yes, yes, your name. <laughs> you certainly start out with a tough one, don't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, come on. Hmm? What is your name? Well, it's, uh, it's Mortimer. That's right, but we want the full name. Hmm? The full name. Well, yes, Mortimer what? Well, it's, um, uh, oh, Mortimer, uh, oh, Mortimer, um... Yes, yes. Well, come on, come on. Well, don't rush me. All right. <laughs> well, what is it? Well, I'm working on it. All right. <laughs> well, don't you know... Oh, I know it as well as I know my own name. Yeah. Well, isn't it snared? Hmm? Snared. See, Mortimer snared? Phil. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's right. Now, where do you live? Hmm? Where do you live? Your, your address, your residence. Well, one question at a time, please. Well, that's it. Your home, your home. Phil? Yeah. Yes, all right. Every night. Every night, yeah. Well, that's what I'm trying to get at. Now, where are you every night? In my house. In your house, yes. I know, but where is your house? Well, it's the same place. <laughs> well, I haven't moved. No. Well, I'll just put down Snurdville. All right. And the next question? Uh, sex. Oh! <laughs> How old are you? Well, I'm boy about my age. About your age. <laughs> and what is your age? Well, I don't know. You know, keep changing all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Where were you born? I don't remember. Don't remember. I wasn't paying attention at the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mortimer, how can you be so stupid? I don't know. It's just politics, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Now for a more sensible interlude, here are the King Sisters again in a Ray Noble arrangement of a popular new favorite, My Heart Sings. All of a sudden, my heart sings When I remember little The way you dance and hold me tight The way you kiss and say goodnight The crazy things we say and do The fun it is to be with you The magic thrill that's in your tongue Darling, I love you so much The secret way you press my hand To let me know you understand The wind and rain on your face The breathless world of your embrace your little laugh and half surprise, the starlight gleaming in your eyes, remembering all those little things, all of a sudden my heart sings. Oh! 
important things in life. Well, good, good. Now the girls are off your mind, you can spend more time on your homework. Mr. Bergen, one does not do homework in the Foreign Legion. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh Foreign Legion. Aren't you being just a little extreme? No, not at all, Bergen. I've just been putty in their hands, just putty, putty. Yeah. But from now on... Yeah. I'm going to be as hard as iron. Yes. Why, I'm surprised at you, Charlie. That's a very cynical speech for such a handsome, romantic little fellow. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, darn it. Back to putty again. Yeah. yeah. Charlie, it's Olivia de Havilland. Hello, Charlie, my sweet. How do you do, Olivia? Oli- I mean, Misty Haviland. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Haviland, aren't you very formal? Well, you see, Olivia, that's the new Charlie. He said that he, if he ever had another romantic thought, he, he hoped he'd choke, didn't you? Uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm inclined to sympathize with you, Charlie. You poor boy, someone must have hurt you terribly. Yeah, you will never know what I've been through. <laughs> well, you come here and tell me all about it. Yeah, well, I've suffered. I did everything for that girl. I even dyed my hair for her. But it was a useless sacrifice. Useless. Ah, I see. I guess you just died in vain. Yeah. <laughs> What I can't figure out is why women were ever invented anyway. Oh, you're so right, Charlie. After all, wouldn't we be better off without them? No coaching, please. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, uh, what are you going to do with this uh, boy? What do you think we should do with him? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Uh, well, what could I do to make what could I do to make all women hate me? Yeah. <laughs> Well, now, let me see. Would you bodyguard to protect you? A bodyguard? Yes, certainly. And I'd be glad to take the job. You mean to sort of shoo the girls away? That's right. I'll be your, uh, shoo-shoo baby. Oh, <laughs> come, come. <laughs> certainly. I'll be a, a regular MP in the Garden of Love. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'll, uh, build a fence around your heart. Okay. But leave a few knot holes, will you? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Now, the first thing you've got to do is write a letter to that girl at school calling everything off. Everything? Everything. Oh. Now, you dictate it to me and I'll write it down. All right, here goes the letter. Let's see. Dear Snooky Pie... Oh, uh, uh, no, no, Charlie. You should use her given name. Just call her Dear So-and-so. Well, I don't think she'd like that. <laughs> Well, why not? Well, she knows what a so-and-so is. <laughs> well, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll continue like this. Um, please be advised that I shall no longer carry your books to school because the flame of love which you kindled in my heart has smoldered and died. Yeah. And when I woke up this morning, even the pilot light was out. <laughs> That's laying it on good. That's good. And then we'll add, uh, yesterday you were my glowing ember, but today uh, you're only a clinker. Yeah, that's good. That's good, yes. Put that in, too. That's the spirit, Charlie. Now, uh, the next thing I'll do is uh, put your whole day on a strict schedule. 
Why, I can see you now. You're you're getting up bright and early at 7 o'clock. Yeah, look again. That ain't me. <laughs> a quick breakfast, and then you hurry off to school. Well, who's going to feed my rabbits? Never mind. You walk into the classroom 10 minutes before the bell. And the teacher falls over dead. <laughs> And after school, what do you do? Well, I go to the sugar bowl and let the girls buy me a soda. Oh, no, you don't. Well, what do I do? What you do I go do? right home and you do your homework for three hours. Three hours? Well, don't feel too badly, Charlie. I'll help you with your homework. That means six hours. <laughs> now then, you eat your supper and you go right to bed. Now, what do you think of my plan? That's the dullest day I ever spent in my life. <laughs> Won't you read to me and tuck me in bed? Well, of course I will, Charlie. You know, I was thinking, Olivia, after Charlie's gone to bed, we might go to a show or do a nightclub, huh? Why, thank you, Edgar, very much. That sounds like a lot of fun. You yeah, wait a minute here. After all, why go out with Bergen when I'm around? <laughs> but, Charlie, you are in bed. All right, I can get up, can I? <laughs> You'll do no such thing, young man. He's right, Charlie. If I'm your bodyguard, that makes you my employer. Mm. And a girl should never go out with her boss. I'm afraid that's true, Charlie. A girl doesn't go out with her boss, huh? That's right. That's a sticker, ain't it? It's, uh... <laughs> I think I got it, Olivia. Yes, Charlie? You're fired. I'll pick you up at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Les Brown and his orchestra take the spotlight now with the Anvil Chorus. 